Hello Flosstube, my name is Deb. I'm the Traveling Stocking Stitcher. This is a Santa hat and beard that I knitted. It's not going to stay on though because I don't think you can hear me or understand me. So give me a minute. Alright, that's much better. Uh, my name is Deb, in case you couldn't hear that. I am the Traveling Stocking Stitcher and uh, this is a Santa hat that I knit many years ago along with the beard. Normally it sits right up on this glass head up here, but using it today for the show. So, our topic today is entitled, In the Air, There's a Feeling of Christmas, because we're going to talk about heirloom Christmas stockings. If you're not familiar with the series, um, in starting about the mid-80s, uh, Cross Stitch and Country Craft magazine, which was put out by Better Homes and Gardens, did a series of heirloom stockings, and every July and August in their issue, they would put out a Christmas stocking. Usually two. There's usually a companion that goes with it. And um, I'll, I'll show, kind of show you how those uh, all look. I've got pretty much a full set of those, and I'll kind of go through and talk about those, show you the ones that I have done. Then after that, we've got some all kinds of finishes and whips, and uh, Floss Tube has turned me into a whip maniac, so I'm doing all kinds of stuff. And one other thing I want to show you today is I'm going to take you a tour. I get questions, what do you do with all these stockings that you do? So I'm going to take you on a little tour to show you how I have my stockings displayed. I put a few of them up behind me here today for you to see. Um, so we've got Celtic ladies over here um, that I have done conversions of for Santa Lucia and Amaryllis. And then I've done Grinch and Max over there. And we've got another Deanna, Donna Giampa Vermilion stocking here. I forget her name. It's kind of a generic name. but those are, are just some here, and then I'll show you the others that I have up. But I thought I'd start with a fun fact about Christmas stockings. And since we're talking about heirlooms, um, kind of the history behind Christmas stockings. Now, it seems like Christmas stockings kind of came and went for a, a period of time. I found an article in the New York Times in 1883, and I will put a link to the article below because it's really pretty interesting. And they were talking about how it looked like Christmas trees, the demand was down because Christmas stockings had made a resurgence. Uh, apparently, Christmas stockings had fallen out of favor for a while, and there were different kinds of stockings. Um, there was a uh, New England stocking, which was apparently long and skinny, and they said it was uh, good for holding paper cutters, I presume that means scissors, um, uh, or knitting needles. Now I think of, if you've seen kind of maybe the, the Olga stocking from Plum Street Samplers, I'm thinking those long skinny things that almost look like a pair of pantyhose. That's my guess. Um, and the uh, problem with those was you couldn't fit anything that wasn't long and skinny in there, so it wasn't really good for putting gifts on there. So the Christmas tree allowed people to put Christmas presents around the tree instead of trying to cram them into a little stocking. Well, they had an opposite problem. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, they had a western stocking, specifically the, the Chicago stocking, they called it. And they said that this was way too large because families couldn't afford to fill this thing out because it was just huge. So Christmas stockings kind of fell out of favor for a while. And the revolutionary new invention that turned things around for the Christmas stocking was the introduction of the Smith Christmas stocking. Now this is revolutionary because it was made out of elastic and so it would expand or contract depending on how many gifts you put in there. So if you didn't have a lot of money, you could put a little in there and it would look fine. If you did have a lot, it would accommodate that as well. So the Smith Christmas stocking um, allowed parents to fill as little or as much as possible in the stockings. Um, the other interesting invention that they uh, put into the Smith Christmas stocking is they included a watertight metallic compartment in the region of the toes and this was for the reception of soft and sticky substances to prevent the contents from being ruined by the softening of molasses candy introduced recklessly among perishable objects. That's a direct quote from the article. And so the article ends by welcoming back the Christmas stocking uh, and hoping for the demise of Christmas trees. Well, they've learned to coexist and that's my fun fact about stockings for today. So heirloom stockings, they usually had two stockings in each, in each issue. One was the more intense, almost full coverage stockings. And then they usually had one that was light 
uh, lighter. Usually it was called a cuff stocking. So there was stitching the top and then down the bottom was more of a fill-in pattern that didn't take a lot of stitching. So you had two options there usually. Um, and they also sold these in pamphlets starting in about 1991. But usually they didn't always have the companion stocking with it, the cuff stocking with it. So you either got one or, one or the other. And then finally, in 1995, they put a collection in a book form. And they usually, they don't have any of the, the lighter stockings in here, the cuff stockings. Um, they just have the, the full coverage stockings in the book. Now this is a, a book, um, I do have the book. It's kind of hard to find. And it's a little expensive. I didn't pay a ton of money for it. Not what they, I've seen them asking, you know, a range of 50 or or $100. But um, I managed to find a, a decent price on it. Because the one I had trouble finding was the first one that came out. This is Northwood's Stocking. And this one, I think this might be my favorite of all of them. I like the blue window. The book, even though it didn't have the companion stocking with it, it does give you, with each stocking, a couple of extra things. So here they've got a candle tag that you can do, and a little ornament with a doll on it, a uh, doll and candle gift tags that you can do. So that's the first one there. And then finally, um, these were reissued by Cooler Designs. So you can get them from like 123Stitch or wherever you. Um, so they are available. Um, the companion stockings are typically sold separately, um, but Cooler does have some, if not all of them. Then the next year, July and August of 1986, they came out with Home for Christmas. So it is here, the cover. And I do have this one. And this one I think of as the child I gave birth to 30 years ago and is still living in the basement because I'm so close. It's almost finished, but I just can't get it to move on. Here it is. Now, kind of the story behind this one, I'll get close here for you to see. We even have some back, back stitching done, which normally I usually do my back stitching last, at least back then I did, because this has been, like I say, kicking around for a number of years. And I started this stocking, and then, like I said, I was so close to done. I had my working copy. A friend of mine at work wanted to, to stitch it, so I gave her my original. And at that point I lost interest and I lost the, the working copy for a while. It got really, it was just a photocopy, it was all ragtag, it was hard to read. I thought, probably not ever going to finish this. And then I picked cross stitching back up and found online that I could find these things. So I found this, this magazine, actually this magazine, I think, whoops, I think I found it uh, a garage sale or something because it's got somebody else's name on it. I don't think I bought that online. And then in the book, here's Home for Christmas. And along with that, they have teddy bear and a hurricane lantern ornaments that go with that one. And then one other thing I'll show you here is, this gets tricky because i got to go to all the different pages. The companion piece for this one is a mistletoe cuff stocking. And this is what it looks like, the one, the big one here. Now, they also show you in this episode, the previous here. So here's the Northwood stocking, the one I showed you that's in the book. And the companion that went with that is, whoops, this one over here. And that is a Victorian garland cuff. I'll get in there a little bit closer so you can kind of see. So you can see the companion ones are a lot less stitching. They have almost this kind of wallpaper look that kind of goes with the, the wallpaper on the heirloom stockings. That's that one. Okay, the next one, I don't have the magazine for this one, but I do have the pamphlet. So here it is, this is Holiday Kitchen. And they do show you can take some motifs, like here's the angel, and you can stitch the angel individually, or the cow on the wheels, the cow toy down here. So uh, you do have uh, some ornament options. Um, I did this one. I don't have it here. I did it for a friend in 1994 that I used to work with, and we've sort of lost touch over the years, so I will include a photo here and shows you what it looks like. And that's the kitchen one. The next one up 
is from July and August 88. So this is called Holiday Study Stocking. So that Santa kind of, I think it's a Santa doll because he's kind of just collapsed in a chair there. And then the companion piece over here is the Horn and Holly Cup Stocking. Uh, whoops, over there. And if I look it up in the, the book over here, this is it. there it is in the magazine, or the, excuse me, the book. And they've got a couple of extra ornaments on here. They've got truck and train gift tags that you could do as well. So this one I have also done. And this one is my mom's stocking. So because it's for a real person, it has trim and it has a tassel. Those are my rules. I don't like putting them on because they're a pain in the neck and I only do it for real people. So here, her name is Lois. It's hard to read that across the top. I wish I would have put them all together without spacing them out in between. They showed doing that with a shorter name, I think, and, or maybe I decided to do it. I don't know, but it's hard to read. Really like that window. Very pretty. You got the apples, you now you see the cinnamon sticks, you got a little bit of texture there. You've got the French knots with the popcorn and the, and the what do you call them, um, cranberries. And there's Santa, his mustache has got a little texture to it as well. And the train set and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot going on in these. Um, you know, they're not as intense as a full coverage necessarily, but I remember them being a, a whole lot of stitching. And I don't know that, I've, I don't know, uh, maybe I would uh, do one of these again. I've got all, I should. We'll see. I haven't done any of the companion ones, but all right. The next one up, oh, I do have the, the pamphlet on that one as well. So here's what it looks like in the motifs they've chosen to do as ornaments. The next one we have is, this is Stitcher Studio. I have the pamphlet on this one. And so this would be fun for anybody who is a cross stitcher or quilter or anything like that. You've got the old Singer sewing machine over here. It says Singer. Yeah, it says Singer. And all kinds of stitching accoutrement. And also the, the one up here with the tape measure and the pin cushion. That one is um, called Seamstress Cuff Stocking. Right. Here in the book. And then they are showing a sewing machine pin that you get as an extra in the book. But again, companion stocking not included in that one. Then we have, and this is one that I wish I would have done for my husband. I did a different one and didn't think about this one. This is from 1990. And then this is the holiday workshop stocking. So I've got, I've got a better picture of it here. I've got the pamphlet as well. This will show it better. So this is it here. And it's got all the tools that Santa needs to make his toys. Because my husband's a, a very cool, handy, handyman guy. Um, so that would have been fun to do for him. If he's good, maybe I'll make him a second stocking. And if I look at it in the book, this one is... Does this one have a companion? Oh, you know, yes it did, I forgot. On the back, they have this Santa that you can make, and it's an articulated Santa, so you can make him move around. He's, the joints are held together. And so the idea is, is you can put him on the companion stocking, this one here. This is uh, garland cuff stocking with movable Santa ornament. So, well, that's kind of fun. 
you can have it, or you can do the Santa by itself and just have it be a movable ornament. That's an idea. And page seven in the book will show you. So here is the workshop. And along with that is Noah's Ark and a Santa ornament, which looks like the articulated Santa, but just without the articulation. And, you know, tell you the truth, that's right in the stocking, so figure those out on your own. We have from 1991, The Music Room. I think this is probably my next favorite one. So this is very pretty. Again, I'm just a sucker for those blue windows. They've got a piano on here, and they've got cello and horns and drum and music stand. It sounds really pretty. And the companion on this one is poinsettia cuff stocking, and it looks like this. Like it might have a little bit of beading in there, which I don't know that any of the others do, but you certainly could dress them up a little bit with some beading. Sugar and Spice came out in 92. And I do have the pamphlet on this one as well. These are a little bit clearer pictures. And the companion on this one is on the back of the pamphlet here. This is Angel Cuff, I believe it's called. Yep, Angel Cuff. There is the book. Got an interesting ruffle at the top of that stocking. And then over on the side, the Venture stocking pin and elegant floral brooch are the ornaments that came off of that one. And the last one, I don't have either the magazine or the, um, the pamphlet. This one is in, the one I have is only in the book, although I think they sell them all separately. Um, this one's called Toys and Game Stocking. And here it is. A lot of clear there. So they've got checkerboard and they've got Santas and cars and toys. So for a little kid, they've got a barn down on the toe and a jack in the box on the heel, all kinds of stuff going on there. And the ornaments that are available are gingerbread, buttons, and barrette. I'm not sure exactly what the, um, there's a gingerbread cuff, or gingerbread boy cuff. Might have been in this one since I don't have the magazine. I don't know what the companion is because the companions are not in the book. So I'll put a picture of one I found. Um, I think, like I said, Cooler Designs has picked up a lot of these and reissued them. And that's one I assume probably went with this one because I don't have that associated with anybody else. There's also a couple other that Cooler Designs has. Um, there's a Gardener's Delight that has a similar look to that. And I'll put pictures of these up because I don't have these. Um, so this one kind of has the same look and feel to it. And then there's a crafter's corner. I'll put a picture of that one up as well. And uh, take a look at that. These were all designed by Sandy Orton. And um, she, it's kind of unfortunate, but I could not find any mention of her name in any of these, either the magazines or the book or the, um, the pamphlets. I didn't see the designer name listed at all. It wasn't until the cooler designs um, started crediting her with that stuff. So it's kind of unfortunate that she hasn't gotten a credit. Because um, otherwise she'd probably be known kind of like Marilyn um, Levitt in Bloom or Teresa Wensler or, you know, whoever. Um, I have seen recently uh, at, Tina, or, at Tina Stitches is doing um, Pageant Kings, which is also by Sandy Orton. And it's beautiful. It's very blingy. These don't have any bling, don't, don't have any beatings, don't have any crying or anything like that. Um, but um, she's doing Pageant Kings, which is, I think, out of pre print and hard to find. But go check out her latest because it's really, really lovely. And also Rachel Q Stitches I saw um, on Instagram. I was just kidding it up as well. 
Um, so it, it's really, really a beautiful piece that Sandy Orton has done. So because she hasn't gotten a lot of credit, who knows what other things might be out there that she may have done. Before we move on from heirloom stockings, I do have a seal of approval. A couple of seals of approval, because I've seen a few of these stitched. Um, I would recommend that you check out Brenda Handwork Maniac, episode number six. And in that episode, she's done a number of these for her kids. Um, and so she has each one of them talk about, talk about the stockings um, that she has done. So that's a good one to watch. I also would recommend Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, episode 18. She has also shown a couple of these stockings as well. So um, those are my two shout-outs uh, for seal approval for this particular topic. Let's get started with talking about finishes and whips. So I've got a stocking which is so close to being an FFO. So it's going to be like a SFFO, semi-fully finished object, or maybe an AFFFO, almost fully finished object. I could put too many Fs in there, but anyway. So my neighbor Katie is a good is a, a, a great quilter, and she had her sister Margaret, also a great quilter, on speed dial long distance from Michigan, helping us out with this. So here is what we got so far, and it's not too bad. I put some blue um, velvet on the back, and of course, you know, can't just do this easy. I have to choose kind of the worst fabrics to do it with, because velvet is notoriously bunchy. But I basted it first, so it did a pretty good job. And then this is the part we haven't finished yet, so I don't have the, the top done, because you need to put the lining inside. And of course, what did I choose? I chose nice slippery satin to go inside there. problem here is it's too skinny. I didn't, didn't do it right. so. Actually, you know, we got bunchy, we got slippery, we got skinny, we got three of the four seven dwarfs rejected names, which are worth a Google, by the way, because those are real things. Um, some, some that come to mind uh, that they had are Wheezy and Burpee and uh, what else, Baldy. So give those a Google, because those are fun, but I'm working on my own new set here. So eventually, this is going to go in here, and you sew it and you turn it inside out. So once I get that figured out, I'll show it to you one more time. Um, this particular design, uh, Lucky Chance Stitcher Amanda mentioned that um, Cooler has picked up some of the old Janlin and Bucilla um, designs that are out of print. So I think this is probably one of those old ones. But I think, like I say, I think it's called Christmas Village. So one more time, once I get that finished up, you'll see that. Next thing I have to show you is, I was working on this last time, this is Christmas Bells. And it was taken out of a magazine, I'll put all the details below, because I talked about this extensively last time in my video, if you really want to know you can go over and look at it. And because it's square, I wanted to do this, but I didn't quite know how to make it into a stocking. So, here it is. And I've named it Francis Appleton Longfellow. Again, I won't go into the whole story because it's over in my other videos, but this is the wife of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow who wrote the lyrics, or the, the words, I don't think he intended them to be a song, to I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And I guess she went by the name Fanny um, most of the time. I like to put people's formal names in stockings. My stockings have Deborah on it, even though I go by Deb. Um, but it also... I don't know if it's a British thing. I mean, she was American, but you know, the British maybe tend to have people named Fanny more often. I don't have to know if they have the same connotations we have here, but it's basically the UK, UK equivalent of bum. So, you know, I don't really want to put Fanny on there. So, Francis Appleton Longfellow it is. Put some bells. I just mimicked the bells that are in the bell tower here. Um, I did change the color on the tower. I wanted there to be some blue in there. It's a little bit of a grayish. Actually, it looks blue in the picture, but I wanted some blue in there. Well, other than that, I did that as, as recommended, or as called for. And then, to make it fleshed out, I put 
a music staff down at the bottom, a couple bars, and the last two lyric or last two um, verses of the song from Henry Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I've got the date of birth there, and then the music was by Johnny Marks. There's two versions of the song. The Johnny Marks one is the one I'm familiar with, and then I did need a bell to kind of put on the toe. And so I found this one. And this one didn't have the Algerian eyelets, but I found one that looked like it could be used because there's a lot of Algerian eyelets in the design itself. So I found it, this book. It's Sam Hawkins' 520 Christmas cross-stitch designs. And it's got, I won't be able to show you because they don't really have, um, they're all just charts. They don't they have a few pictures here and there of some of the finished stuff, but this is a bell, and I don't know, I could maybe show it to you and show you real quick from a distance what it looks like, um, but it looked like it would have the opportunity to add in, of course, mark on the page would have been a really good idea. Oh, here it is. So, I'll just kind of hold it back real quick, but you see these little dots? They look like they could be made into Algerian eyelets, and so that's what I did. Here it is on the corner. So that's my finish. Needs to be fully finished. Yeah, we'll see. And then I also have been working on. Speaking of, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. I showed this in my last video as well. Got a little bit more progress. I'm doing Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow, and I'm doing it as a stocking by just doing two rows down and three rows across the bottom. So it's kind of an L shape. And so I'm doing nine of the squares. And what I've got so far, oops, let me take off the corner of steps so you can see the whole thing. So this is where I'm at. Last time I had Goodwill Towards Men. I still have a little bit more work to do on this one here. Um, there's, I was waiting for some of the, it's all DMC except for there's um, mint frost um, thread from, um, I'll put the name at the bottom because I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so I have that, and it's actually what's used up in the birds up here, but that needs to go a little bit in here on the bottom, um, and there's some up in the crown and stuff, that, and then that one square will be done. Then the ship, you haven't seen the ship before. Uh, I've got all the stitching pretty much done on the ship, so now, it's just a matter of filling in all the black because um, this has got like 8,464 square stitches in each square when it's full coverage. This is the only full coverage piece, but this all has to be stitched in black. I am using Anchor Black instead of the 310 DMC because I just think it seems just a little richer in color to me and the coverage is good, but it's a lot of stitching. Um, and so what I've mandated for myself is there is a admission price and so the price of admission for me to stitch on this particular piece is I have to do at least a strand of black before I can move on to anything else. Now it's taken me a while and I probably should have imposed a two drink minimum that might have moved me along a little faster but for right now this is what I've got done. I did take out, it's going to say Happy New Year here but I didn't want that to interrupt the flow of the song lyrics so I'm just going to just do all black behind the, behind the ship and actually it'll be better. The ship takes up a lot of space. And it really didn't take a lot long to stitch, but for some reason I'm bogging down on, on all the black background. Surprise. And then this up here, uh, the birds. It says something else. I heard a bird song sing in December, a magical thing and sweet to remember. I'm switching and I'm going to put and wild and sweet, the words repeat down here next to the birds. Now, I started just stitching. I, I spent some time thinking about how to put the words in there differently, and then I just started saying, well, I'm just going to start stitching. I was going to put maybe some, the, um, the other one I'm not doing is this one here, and I thought about using some of the um, snowflakes and putting an and, and then a snowflake, and then a snowflake and the word wild, and then, you know, alternating back and forth. But I'm using 22 count water, I think, gray water, gray water, gray, something like that. Um, and it's basically a, a light gray, and the white doesn't show up real well. You can see kind of what the white peacock looks like. It doesn't look too bad on camera, but in person it's a little hard to see, and you weren't really picking up the, the thing, so I bailed on that, and then I was just going to start stitching it. Then I started thinking, you know what I would like to do is, I'm not going to be able to do this really cool 
peacock here. And I thought about, oh, if I had done this better and moved over, I could have moved it up more and this could all fit. Um, but then I also was kind of uncomfortable that putting this little peacock next to these big huge birds and the colors were different and they did I like the tone of what the birds are looking like right now so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and put and wild and sweet the bird, birds repeat down here and then I'll put the crowns on the bottom or something I'll put if there's enough crowns on here I can find plenty of crowns that I'm not using to put on on that although I'm not quite sure that the crowns upside right and upside down seems like the monarchy in distress, because you should do that with flags, you should put the flag upside down when things are in trouble. So, that's where we're at. And this has been a very, very fun stitch. Um, I thought it would be, you know, it's on 22 count, which is pretty small, um, smaller than I normally do. Putting the stitches not so bad, taking stitches out. This is much harder to frog at 22 count, um, so think about it twice if you're, you don't want to mess stuff up. Because getting the stuff out of there is a little tricky, but but yeah, I've been having been having fun with this one. Next one is we've got another finish as well. This is a travel related one. You've seen this before. This is my London from Mystic Stitch, and this is based on a travel poster that uh, is TWA. Fly TWA is the the poster, and this is what it looks like finished. So I've got it in a poster frame like this. Yeah, so I'll get up close here. See, again, this works a little bit better when you pull all the way back because it's got kind of that, that effect we got going on there. Um, speaking of Westminster Abbey, which is here, um, and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, he is the only non-British person that has a bust in Poets Corner. And he's also the uh, only American poet with a bust in once Mr. Abbey in the Poets Corner where they pay tribute to writers. And what else we've got here? We've got the Elizabeth Tower here. Um, that Big Ben is on there. When we visited they had Big Ben out of commission. <clears throat> and in 2019, from 2017, it was like six weeks or not even like two weeks before we got there. Um, they started renovation work, and then in 2019 they finished. And when they finished, people were all up in arms because the the hands on the clock on Big Ben or on well on the tower Ben is the the bell, but um, the clock tower the the hands were this bright um, Prussian blue, and people were like, "What did you do?" And it turns out that conservators had found out that originally they were that color and in the, the coal and the soot and the pollution turned the things black. So in the 1930s they just painted the hands black. And so this was their opportunity to restore it to the original. And so I thought that was kind of an interesting, interesting fact. And then the other thing that's on here is the um, Westminster Scholars War Memorial. And this is uh, also known as the Crimea and Indian Mutiny Memorial. And it's an 1861 memorial uh, that commemorates 19 former pupils of Westminster School that died in uh, the Crimean War of 1854-56 and nine that died in the Indian Mutiny of 1857 and 58. So those are represented here. Again, the, the thing with London, I talked about the colors are a mystic stitch. Um, the colors are not what you would expect. Westminster Abbey is very white and of course that's not green, but the poster uses those colors, so I think it's fun. That's that. Uh, since I got done with that, I really liked Mystic Stitch. Unfortunately, they are out of business now. But I decided to start Capri, or Capri as it's supposed to be pronounced. I always feel funny calling it that. But we went to Italy 2019, I think. And um, this is what I've got so far, I've got a little over the first, I've got the full first page done and then we've got to start on the middle part there. I was originally going to do this um, on blue because there's a lot of, I'm going to like maybe do a light blue. Um, also this is a, a vintage travel poster that they've recreated. But I was going to leave, you know, kind of the top color there because there's a lot of that color in there. 
But then I realized, and this happened with the London one too, you can't really see it on the example, but there, it looks like a square, but it's not. There's a lot of like cream colored thing that kind of just goes off to the side and down below. And when I looked at it, I really wanted it to be just a rectangle. So when I cut that back, I thought I was going to have to do it on 18 count to fit it into an 11 by 14. When I cut that back, I was able to do it on 14 count. It means I have to do all the stitching, but I don't have to stitch all this other stuff that it can't really see anyway, and it's going to look weird. And so I decided to do it on white because I wanted the border to be crisper and, and white because Capri has a lot of white buildings and stuff like that. So, so that's where this is. Uh, and this is the, the Farag Faragoliano rock formation. And so you see that around the Isle of Capri a lot. Next up is very exciting because I have officially started my first Mirabilia, my first Nora Corbett. And I found this fabric. Unfortunately, it's no longer available because it's Russian fabric. Um, but I posted this on Instagram, and Kitchy Whips was very, very excited about it. She really liked it. Um, so here is Mirabilia's uh, Leilani the Hula Dancer. It's a freebie. It's on Mirabilia.com. And she's always appeared, um, the dress, or the skirt, the grass skirt, always looked too olive green, and especially with this fabric, um, which I just love. It just looked Hawaii to me, reminded me of Hawaii. The fabric is called, let me look here, KD148. I got it from, I'm not going to pronounce this, H-R-I-S-I-S-I's art, Harisi's art, dot co, dot UK, um, is where I got it. And you can kind of see at the bottom the name of the stuff. I looked on, on Instagram for ideas, and I saw Maine Ideas, M-A-Y-N-E Ideas. She's in the Philippines, and she had done a conversion. And so I asked, would you mind sharing me, sharing with me what you've done, you know, what you used? And she just used a uh, DMC variegated, and I went to Michael's, and they didn't have the one she wanted, but I found one that I really liked as well. And I think with this fabric, um, this will work well. And, and I looked online, and... You can just search for the components of the variegated colors, and it tells you the color families. So, in this particular one, oops, what's the name of it? It is uh, 4045. The Moulin is 319, 367, and 320. And so I took that information, because those are the three components that make that up. I took that information and searched for the, the DMC color families, which is basically like the Sherwin-Williams Sherwin color strip you get samples of and it just kind of shows you the intensities from light to dark and so I was able to pick out colors that are from the same, same color family that I'm going to use on the skirt. And then for the colors, because I was using this you know, purplish thing, they asked for Karen Water Lily um, uh, Bittersweet, which is kind of a red and I thought that would be a little too jarring. So I found this in my stash. This is also Karen Water Lilies. It's Coral Shells. It's SNC41. So the ones I've done here in, on here so far are this color, which I think works really well. And then I am also going to use the Called for Tequila Sunrise Karen Water Lilies. I've done a little bit up here, just a little bit. And that's more yellowish, orangish, and kind of also pinkish as well. So pretty excited about how that's looking. Yeah. I'm happy to say I have started my first Nora Corbett, Mirabilia. I'm in the club now. Next up, as long as we're talking Hawaii, um, you might sense that a theme is coming up. Floss tube has really changed, uh, well, me doing a floss tube has changed how I stitch. Because for the first year, this is the 12th episode, this and I do once a month, um, I was showing you things that I've stitched over the years. And so now I'm having a play a little game of chess here and plan ahead and say, oh, what am I going to do? So you might guess that there might be a tropical or Hawaiian theme coming up in a month or two. And so to accommodate that, this is Hawaii. This is, um, I'll show you the picture of it here. I found this on 
um, Cross Stitch the World, and it's called crossstitchtheworld.co.uk. They're also on Facebook, and they have a lot of vintage travel and vintage posters, food, um, like um, Art Nouveau and Art Deco posters and stuff. Really kind of cool stuff. And um, when I, I I went to order this, and I got kind of an error message. And I thought, oh no, it, you know, PayPal came back with this error message, um, and it took my money. And I was like, oh well, I just got taken. And so, and I didn't get a, you know an immediate PDF sent to me. And so I, they were on Facebook, and so I contacted Leslie, who is. Uh, in the business there. And she was very, very nice. She responded right away and said, oh, we've got an issue with how it works. And she made sure she sent me the, the stuff right away. And she even sent me, we chatted a little bit, and I said I had a floss tube, and she sent me some pictures of things that she was working on. And so um, I can vouch that they're a reputable company. To do this, again, I wanted to let the fabric do all the, the heavy work. And I didn't want to have to do a lot of stitching of the colors. So I've been looking for quite a while to try to find a piece of fabric that would be suitable to replace this. Now, 995, DMC 995 is, I don't know if that's going to look real, it's an electric blue and I wanted to find a background and this is pretty close, as close as I could, could find. And I found this from, let me know here, um, Tom and Lily Creations. They're on Etsy, they're in France, um, but they're really reasonable. Um, it was very quick shipping and um, it's beautiful fabric. It's got, you know, it's a hand dyed, real vibrant blue color. And uh, so the sky and the ocean, I don't have to stitch. And then it'll have kind of that textured look as well, which is kind of fun. Um, so 16 count, which really ends up being about an 18 count with the hand dyed stuff. But I would also recommend their fabric as well, because they had some very bright, colorful um, fabrics that they have available as well. And then I have some thank yous that I want to do. Um, first up is Lynn, the Lancashire Stitcher, and I said her name wrong, or her channel wrong, in my last video when I shouted her out. I called her the Lancaster Stitcher, which is wrong. She's the Lancashire Stitcher, and well, at least I didn't call her the Lannister Stitcher because I don't watch Game of Thrones, but I'm guessing that's probably not a good thing. Um, the Lancashire Stitcher, she's in the UK, and I shouted her out. And she, in return, um, gave me a very nice shout out as well. Um, so she watched my last video and, and was uh, pleased with that. And so I appreciate Thank you, Lynn. Um, as I always do, anybody who shouts me up, I put them in the shout out reel, reel, reel uh, the playlist at the end of my videos. So you can easily go get to that and check her out as well. So thank you, Lynn, for, for doing that. Um, I think I got a lot of subscribers from her particular shout-out because she's very popular as well. Um, so thank you very much for doing that. So thanks. And then one thing I didn't realize when I was naming my channel, The Traveling Stocking Stitcher, that the U.S. is the only English-speaking country that spells travel with one L or traveling with one L. And so as a result, I think people may tag me and I'm not aware of it um, because, you know, they use two L's. You know, there's a lot of Canadian stitchers, there's a lot of stitchers in the UK, Australia, everywhere else people use two L's in there. So um, I don't get notified, so if you see somebody that mentions me um, or curses me or warns me not to wa warns you not to watch me, you know, let me know because I might not find out because of the spelling issue. So uh, some sales that are going on. Um, there's a couple of them that Memphis Sarah E is hosting. She's doing a, uh, she's going to have surgery on her hand, so she's going to have some salves that she can just kind of vicariously watch. And she's doing, it's her birthday month in December. It's my birthday month in December also, so I'm going to um, be working on, she has uh, at, uh, hashtag so fancy b-day sal. And she started it on the 8th and of December. And so my Leilani hula girl will probably count for that. She also is involved in uh, a Sue Hillis Designs. She, they're doing the Yo-Ho-Ho-Ho Ho Pirate Santa, um, which a couple of videos I did a pirate-themed one where 
I made a peg leg sand, uh, stocking out of that particular one, so I won't be joining the sale. I've, sale, I've already stitched it, um, but Sammy Liz and Bougie Stitchers and Lynn X Stitches is also involved in that sale, so that might be one you want to get in on. Um, I also did like a pirate boot and a parrot with a parrot leg, and so if you're looking for inspiration for finishing stuff, um, go check out X Marks, the cross stitch spot, episode 9 of my videos. Um, but, you know, that's a sale if you want to join in on Christmas stuff and pirate stuff, you can do that as well. And that's all I have to show you, except for I'm going to take you on a tour of all the stockings. So come on, come with me. So this is a Jack Frost. I haven't covered this one before. You can see all the different uh, Christmas stocking hangers that I've collected over the years um, from garage sales or thrift stores or what have you. And we've got Gloria and Belle, and Holly and Ivy, the four angels from Cat and Mouse Designs. Here's the Satsuma Street. I named this one Yule Cat. It's behind the, the tropical flowers that I'm trying to overwinter here on the sun porch. And then we've got Parson Brown. This is a snowman one I haven't shown yet on any of my videos. And then Buddy the Elf. And come over here, and here we get all the reindeer, we've got Dasher, which is the Stony Creek, and Dancer, which is the Satsuma Street. All these next ones coming up are kits, and I won't remember all the, the kit names, but we've got Prancer, Vixen, and Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen, we've got Rudolph and Clarice. And for our cat Cricket, my husband Howard, mine, which is the same as Prancer, so it needs to be redone. We've got oh, Holly Jolly Roger from Sue Hillis Designs, made him into a peg leg. Yo ho ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Pa pum pum. We've got Long John Silverbells, also a Sue Hillis, the Shiver Me Timber Snowman. And Sugar Plum Fairy, which is a Stony Creek design. And then we've got Ebenezer Scrooge from Primitive Hair and a Michael Powell design for Tiny Tim. And hanging on by the buffet, we have faith, hope, and charity. We'll zoom in on those. Charity. This is faith. That's hope, I'm sorry. And this is faith. Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the tour. And Merry Christmas to you all. And if you feel like liking or subscribing, I'd appreciate that. And I hope you have a very, very happy Christmas and New Year. And we'll see you next month. Thanks. Bye.